Hi. <clears throat> I'm going to do some just talking about basic integration rules. Um, we have five rules that we're going to just be focusing on. We have the constant rule, the multiple constant rule, the sum rule, the difference rule, and then the, uh, the simple power rule. So the simple power rule is really the big focus of this, but the rest of them I'm going to explain them really quickly. So we have the constant rule, which I think you guys kind of discovered yesterday, is that the integral of a constant is um, the constant times x. So if I had something like this, like the integral of 6 dx, I would have this be 6x plus c. Okay, so that's the first rule. That's the constant rule. Okay, now the second rule is uh, the multiple constant rule. So basically what this is saying is that if I have a constant x being multiplied by a function, I could pull the constant out before differentiating. So that's saying if I had something like the integral of 3x squared dx, I could actually pull this 3 out if it made it easier for me. I would have 3 times the integral of x squared dx. Now this, in some cases, can be easier to integral, uh, integrate without the constant attached to it. So this, we would follow the simple power rule in order to figure this one out, okay? So that's there, that's uh, just like an extension on that first rule, we could take that three out, okay? Or take that constant out, okay? Now, uh, the third rule here, we have, and the third and the fourth rule, they're pretty much the same, uh, is the sum of the difference rule. So what this means is that the sum of the difference of integrals, like if we have a function that's a, sum or a function that's a difference, we can separate them and then integrate them separately. So this is saying like if I had something like x squared plus 2x plus 3, I could separate that into x squared plus integral of 2x plus integral of 3. And if these were minuses, then these would obviously be a difference rule, so I can move this out into a minus. Okay. Um, so those mirror the derivative rule. So if I have a derivative of a complex polynomial here, then I could split it up and take the derivative of all the pieces here, of all the individual pieces. <laughs> okay. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the simple power rule. So that's kind of what we've been discovering and thinking about uh, going backwards from the simple derivative rule. So if I had something like this, let's do this 3x squared here. Okay. I have this 3x squared, where 3 would be my k, okay, and then 2 is my m. So its derivative here is going to be 3 over n plus 1, which is 3, times x, raise this by 1. So I have 2, and this becomes 3. This is going to reduce down to 1. I'm always going to have a plus c on the end. Now let's think about this. If this is correct, the derivative of my right side should be equal to this side over here. So I have x cubed plus c, that is indeed equal to 3x squared, okay? Now, this rule down here is without the constant. So if this has a coefficient of 1 here, we can use the, this simple derivative rule here. Now, I do want to just note that this is not for when n is equal to negative 1. Uh, when n is equal to negative 1, we have a very specific type of function that uh, we should be looking for, which we'll get into tomorrow.